After four long years, God of War Ragnarok is finally here. Now, I just went and took about 25 hours. I beat the game, and I wanted to make a video to kind of sit there and talk about my thoughts and feelings on the game. I had my buddy Garrett come by. He isn't quite done yet, but he's pretty close to the end, so stay tuned and see what we think. All right, Garrett. Preset. What? Uh, you were like more excited for this game than I was Very going much into so. it. And uh, the do you want to talk about God of War twenty eighteen quickly before any of this? Like, sure. Yeah. It was. I thought it was good. I liked it. I beat it. I was looking forward to the new game. I was definitely going to play it. Like you were talking about it. You were really mm -hmm. hyped for the sequel. But oh yeah. I've been ready for the sequel since the first one finished. I was just kind of just waiting. I knew I'd like it. I knew I'd play it. I knew I'd beat it because I've played a lot of the other God of War games. Mm -hmm. But holy crap. Because this... My thing with this game is... I know the combat was like Dark Souls-ish fused with, I guess, For Honor would probably be the closest combo you can go with because it's designed on blocking or parrying or however what you not. Mm. But I, it's the storytelling that I really liked yeah. in the first one because it made mythology super interesting. It made the characters down to earth. It made them very enjoyable to talk to. Like the Mimir scenes in the boat where he goes over like different plot points of like how Asgard's walls are built by... Oh, it's like or through or whatever. Like, I can't say their names. What, so well. Yeah, what are the uh, what are the giants? Yeah. yeah, like and how it goes over North mythology and how it shapes the land and how everything is tied into it, um, especially when it goes into like the Valkyries were a big a big part of what I really liked. Yeah. I, oh my God. I, did you know a lot about uh, Norse mythology before these games? I knew like a little bit. Like I knew pieces. Nothing that I would consider myself an expert on. Like okay. I knew a lot more about Greek. Okay. Than I did Norse. I just knew yeah. like the the key figures and I knew most of the Norse stuff from uh, Marvel. Just, yeah, like I like I really didn't know that much. I knew of Thor and Odin. Yeah, like I knew of all their weapons. I was actually kind of curious to see if they would unleash like Odin's. I haven't seen it yet. Odin's horse Slepnir. It's like the eight legged horse that he rides around on. Really? Yeah. Maybe that. Because he also is known for having a spear. I think it's called like Gumnir or whatever. It's yeah. like the never missing spear. And I haven't seen him whip that out, but I did see one scene he like walks over to one, so I was interested in that. But I really like the how the story has progressed and how they they switch the dynamic of him being, you know, <laughs> the best way to put it is in man too angry to die. Like right. in the original God of War, he dies like three times or whatever, and he just comes back. So it's really really cool to see him going from the man who's too angry to die to seeing him become, you know, this tempered war master who's just all about like essentially just all about himself. He just wants to keep his family together and he just wants to stay out of everything. Yeah, it, it is weird. He just wanted to leave it all behind and that kind of led into this game where the first game is it's very much about him and his son mm -hmm. and do you ever like in this game there's a lot of uh, switching, you know, partners. Yeah. Did that happen in the first game? I no. don't. Yeah, it it's was just, just you and Atreus. Atreus the yep. whole, yeah. Yep. You'd have Brock and Sindri would be around you and Freya would also help but she was never she was never like an actual playable character neither was Sindri or Brock in any regard yeah that's what I was going into this game that was kind of surprising to see how they kept shifting that around and uh I guess now we're going to talk about this game but oh man I you, did... you haven't beaten it yet right just no I'm like I'm probably like right there I beat it just like an hour like an hour before we started this, I beat it. Because I was, like, ripping through. Like, we'll try to get through, but as time comes on, it's like, you know what? We'll just wait. I'll yeah. finish with you on Wednesday night yeah. or something. We'll do it then. It was so good. So you you were just saying before we started, you you were playing for, like, basically three days straight? Well, the, I, I was Did you have to restart with your girlfriend? Or no, like... I waited to play with Jesse, okay. and then she came wow. over, and I would play, and then when I was done, I'd be like, okay, I need to take a break. I need to get off the ground, like, stretch my knees or something, maybe play some Overwatch yeah. or something, like... Tie it out, some fast-paced stuff, and she would keep going. <laughs> so it would be like, I would stop. She would immediately pick it up. There would be no wait time. I'm like, <laughs> I literally had to set down a rule. Was, you can't do the story if I'm not in the room. What What did, uh, just a little sidebar here, what difficulty did you play on? We said uh, middle, so give me balance. Okay. Like the middle of the rung. See? Because I always do that one, then I always do it the next one, and then the highest one. Because I know I'll play this game again. Yeah, that's... So I remember my biggest gripe with the first game. It was punishing. It was so <laughs> hard, and I just hated how slow Kratos felt. Like mm -hmm. 
the old man, like, I get it. He's supposed to be older, I get it. But, like, there were points where I was just getting frustrated. I'm like, he doesn't dodge the way I feel like he should be able to. And I, it's just, it was too hard to dodge a lot of stuff. Maybe I just wasn't, well, and I wasn't playing it like a Dark Souls game. Well, from replaying it with Jesse, because Jesse wanted to play it too. And mm-hmm. we actually beat it twice together. And it's, oh, excuse me, it's, it is kind of clunky. Like, I would say the combat is very good, but it's still kind of clunky where yeah. like, the hitboxes are a little buggy and, like, the moving around. And they definitely tighten it up in this one. Yeah, because the, the first game, I think I got through most of it without mm-hmm. realizing what they were doing. I was like, oh, yeah, like a Dark Souls. Okay, block and attack, light hack. Uh, yeah, like light parrying TV, whatever. is Parry. super important. I, I just was not doing that. But then in this game, I... I wanted the story. So I actually went down a notch. I mm-hmm. did uh, Give Me Grace, I think. Yeah. And then there's one, the easiest one is Give Me Story. So I did one up from the easiest. And still towards the end, it was pretty difficult. Have you done any of, like, the, 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 the so, a minor spoiler, but you can find these, like, little, you get this relic or whatever. It's like a sword hilt and you can stick it into these, no, like, two. No, I've done none of those yet. Okay, so there's things that Mimir asked you to do to find, essentially, Einher Yar. Okay. Um, which I don't know if you know what those are. Those are the people who die in combat that become Odin soldiers. Yeah, know, those are the guys that keep like coming down. They serve Odin. They're like yeah. the white ghost looking. They're dudes. like the like you know how those the Hellwalkers. Yeah. These are the guys that died in combat that went up to Valha- Val Valhalla to serve under Odin to fight in Ragnarok. So they are coming mm. down to fight for Odin. So that's who the Einher Yar is. Okay. Um, so you find and they other- wield the Bifrost. Yeah. Primarily, they have the Bifrost weapons. So they have God, these like. This. 12 different characters you can find that are similar to the Valkyrie in the first one. Okay. Where you can find them, you unlock them, and it is such... It is a physical fight to the... You literally have to parry their moves. Like, it, it's like I have to be, like, in their face, almost like a Sekiro kind yeah, of fight, where it's blocking every, like, every hit they do, this, slipping in an attack. Even playing on the easier difficulty, I felt... I was in a rush, because I'm in a, a unique situation where I didn't want to screw around because the I play World of Warcraft. Yep. The fifteenth, the Evoker's coming out, so yep. I wanted to make sure I beat this game, and then still had time to go back and do some of the side stuff. Um, so I, when I did it on the easier set, well, I lost my train of thought. You were on a time limit. Yeah. You did it on the easier thing, so you're kind of rushing through it. Uh, but I still feel like the game would punish you for it because yeah, it's it was it was uh, good. Like the combat was amazing, even going through like. Blocking and dodging, I felt like it was, like you said, they refined it. It felt a lot better. They even um, made it more beneficial for you to switch weapons in combat. Yeah, that so they make, was, like, the immolation plus the frost damage yeah, that you could, that, like, that was huge. And then you have the hidden third weapon now, mm-hmm. right? Which is kind? super cool. Yeah, I guess we could probably start talking about some of the spoilers. You're not all the way... I don't care about to spoilers, the end. Yeah, no. I can probably guess what's probably... I, I'm not going to spoil it because I, I feel like... Um, they keep subverting your expectations. Well, like, see, this isn't even a spoiler. Uh, the whole point of this one is both Kratos and Atreus are trying to avoid the prophecy of Kratos' death. That's like the main... That's what they both want to do. Tra- Kratos is more of concern with keeping his son alive. Yeah. And then Atreus is more of concern with keeping his dad alive because he doesn't want to see it. And I'm just curious to see because yeah. they keep bringing up parts in the talk where it's Freya talking about how what he once was like he was the destroyer even Thor brought it up like you're a destroyer like me yeah so I'm curious like is that a part of the prophecy they told them in order for him because if he could become the destroyer and destroy another pantheon but I still feel like what they're gonna have to yeah. do is probably unfortunately kill him off because all things have to end and then make Atreus kind of become the thing and that's kind of feels like what it has to be that's why I got I had I was playing on the easier difficulty. I was trying to beat it fast. And uh, the, the thing that kept getting me is I heard that the side stories were some of the best side stories in video games. Some of the ones I've played already are phenomenal. Like yeah. You learn about the characters. You learn about that. Like, even for when you go to um, Svartalheim or Neovalil, whatever. whatever the Nivlir. Act- yeah, Nivlir. Um, you learn a ton about Mimir. Like, I don't know if you did the one where there's like a there's like an oil creature in the middle of the lake, but you learn it crap ton about him through no. that i did uh so i did the the side mission in the sands where you free the jellyfish looking yeah. thing that's underground i saved that and after that i kind of decided uh i just want to get through the story i think maybe i did a little bit of extra stuff with uh let's well, that cool thing that's like that you 
jellyfish thing like stays in yeah. the sandbox like you can see it swim overhead and stuff that yeah that was a really cool moment it was fun just you know stopping the sandstorm I, I was a lot of this game i was just blown away by like the father-son dynamic and just hearing their conversations and in that mission where they were talking about like just you know namir says did you ever think he just wants to spend time with you and it's yeah. like the fact okay, so Jesse that, brought it up earlier. The very first part, she goes, "Wow, it doesn't look like Kratos has learned at all." And I'm sitting there like, "I, I don't know. Have you noticed? Like, he is very patient. He yeah. seeks counsel from Mir. Yeah. He literally tries to talk Freya off the ledge like a million times. There's just like one scene. This is definitely a spoiler, um, where Freya is like, "Why wouldn't you fight me?" He's like, "You helped me. You were my. You helped my son. Right. I'm not going to kill you." Right. He's like, "I'm no one's monster anymore." And it's like, it's really cool to see him his change, his yeah. character development to this point has been so m- immense that it, it's like he's a whole other guy. You have the, and I, I thought of this too late, but you were actually kind of lucky because Jesse was playing through the game mm-hmm. before this release, so you had like a refresher. I didn't do that, and I started to wish I did, but yeah. then it was too late. The game was already coming out in, like, three days. So. And what I love is, it, I even told Jesse this, they don't do this often in games where they continue all of the same shit from yeah. the first one over the second one. So, like, they mentioned the... They, a huge plot point is the Valkyries that yeah. we all fought. Which, so it assumes that you went through and you fought all of the Valkyries. Which, that's then, something I missed out on, because I did not do that in the first trust game. Trust me. You should do it in the second yeah. one, and go, or the first one, and go back and fight them, because the last one is abusive. Yeah. She is the most bullshit fight. She is so abusive when Ooh. you fight her. I know she's going to come back or something. Ooh, boy. I know I know there's, because I saw that they released other Valkyries, that there's like a new trade thing and they're corrupted, so I'm curious to see what they'll do, and I'd really hope there's more to fight, because those fight scenes are awesome. So, oh god, it's a, I, I want to revisit, I don't want to tell you anything, because I want you to get through it with Jesse, see what happens, and just naturally, I don't want to spoil anything, because I had my thoughts going into the ending, and it just kind of blew my mind. I, I just know it, because the, the, the storytelling in this one is like a step above. Like, the first one I thought was phenomenal with everything. The way it was written, the way it was directed, acted, the lighting in it is fantastic, the music choice is super ominous and cool, and this yeah. one I feel like they just amped it up to six. Like, this characters are more enjoyable, which I didn't know were possible. Brock still is probably one of my favorite characters on the planet, especially when you're fighting people and he calls people like piss stokers or like <laughs> so he calls people scrotes yeah, all the time. Yeah. Like he's he's oh, a yeah, little fucker. Yeah, or know? he goes with my favorite part is like where it's Sindri and Brock trying to do something and Brock is like Sindri's like, No, I'll go and Brock's like, Nah, you fucker, I'm gonna go with he's like, I'm gonna take Brock. Why? <laughs> he speaks plainly and I get him. He's like, Oh, yeah. okay. He just gets well, along with Kratos. So you got the the um the drop near spear. Mm-hmm. But he even, you know, I think at that point he was mad at Sindri because um, he kind of, like, instigated all this rebellion from Atreus. He did, yeah. He was He was very So that's why he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm done with you. I'm going to take yeah, Brock. You can even see he just, like, looks at him. He's like, <sighs> and just, like, looks away. Yeah. <laughs> I did enjoy the portion. There's the thing on TikTok that people would see when you find you finally get to tear and all that. And he stands up and he's taller than you. And then it, Jesse's like, wow, it's probably the biggest guy we've seen. Yeah. He's like, actually, if you played, like, God of War 3, he fights Kronos. Yeah. And he's literally about to get squished between his fingertips. Yeah. <laughs> you meant, speaking of Tyr, you mentioned Tyr. And I never saw that scene, because I guess it was released beforehand, because you mentioned it before the game I saw it on out. TikTok, yeah. So I was waiting for Tyr. I'm like, ah, I can't wait to see who Garrett's talking about. And you see him, and he's a wimp. Well, <laughs> You're like... He's what? been tortured for like <laughs> millennia or whatever. He's like he's just broken, and even like yeah. Kratos, like he's just a broken guy. Like, yeah, like, uh, and the story kept going on and on. I'm like, he's sleeping in a broom closet. Yeah, he stays in a broom closet. He refuses to fight. Doesn't do anything. Can't even like bring up his old will to help anyone. But the biggest trick that kind of thing that changed me is how Mimir kind of became. Almost like their voice of reason in all of it. Like throughout the entire game, yeah. you can see like Mimir is always on Kratos' side. There's like even a scene in the beginning where he was like, "You could either hold him this tightly and lose him, right, or you could walk with him for right. a little while." And right. it was like you said, it was a lot of fun when he's like, "Boy, didn't you ever think about maybe he's doing this to be with you?" Yeah. And like you see, like Atreus like stop and think, and then later on Kratos goes, "I'm doing this 
for you. Like, this is just to spend time with you. This game did such a good job building up Atreus, mm -hmm. too. Because in the first game, I don't think I really had a problem with him. No, he was just kind of there. Yeah. And then even Thor, like, when you work with Thor, he even mentioned it, too. He's like, because if you... With Thor, you go to Muspelheim again, and there's, like, that thing where you can do all the levels. Yeah. And I don't know if you've done that, but that's really cool. So, you, like, you work through all these trials to get kind of, like, an unlock. That was in... That's in the second game, right? First one. It's in Muspelheim, so it's in the Fire Realm. Okay. So it's I a place where that's also lava. in the second game. It's the place where they also have where Suter, the guy yeah, that's supposed yeah. to destroy at, um, Asgard is. That's where he lives. Hmm. What do you think Surter's going to be like? I have no idea. I feel like he's going to be a goblin. He's going to be like an inch tall. Like, uh, <laughs> because oh they have, God. they talk about how the the, the actual like wall has something built in. And that's the neat part. If there's actually a Freya side mission where he actually talks to, Mimir goes over old stories, and mm -hmm. he actually asks Freya, like, what did the Mason's son who built Asgard's wall actually whistle, uh, whisper to you? He's like, I've always wanted to know what she said. And she tells you what he just says. Really? Yeah. And she ends up telling you, like, there's actually, he said... Uh, essentially, Odin's a liar, and that he built in a failsafe inside the wall that Suter will know how to act with. Mm. So it's like it's going to instantly bring down the wall. And then he's like, ah, I knew it! <laughs> mm. See, this is what I'm looking forward to now, because now I'm done, I have a little bit of time. I'm going to just start re... Well, I guess I don't need to replay it. You just go back to the old realm. Yeah, and so I, I'm going to go clean up all the things that I missed. Which is much. like, now that I'm waiting for Jesse to finish it, I'm going to just start running through and do the side missions because they're they're awesome. Yeah. Because even like even the stupid ones where it's like find and hunt someone, Mimir will like communicate with you. But like those, I really I liked um, Angraboda. Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah, she was good. I did a little bit of extra stuff with her. That was I enjoyed that. Yeah, I had to admit, I was kind of surprised when they switched us to Kratos. Or not Kratos, to Atreus, and you got to see him act. Yeah. And it's really cool how they made him, like, super fast and yeah. agile compared to Kratos, which is like a lumbering tank. I, I At one point, um, Loki says something about, or Atreus says something like, yeah, maybe I just run on chaos. You know, and that's mm -hmm. kind of like Loki's stick, isn't yeah. it? But then that's also Kratos' thing because he's got the blades of chaos. Well, then you know? that's the other thing is because if he does pass away, I do, or Kratos dies. If this is my speculation, it would be cool if they made, you know, a third game just to finish out mm -hmm. the, the the saga to see what happened, but they give Atreus the blades of chaos. Because he also has that, that stupid elf freaking sword, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Like, the thing that uh, yeah. What is, what is it? It's, I, uh, it's Ingrid. Ingrid, yeah. His name is Ingrid, but like... Is that the Loki sword from Marvel, or does it not have a name in I don't Marvel? think they call it anything in the movies. I don't know enough about that the That sword was so cool. I really like that sword. Yeah, it was like whispering around and he could talk to him. But, <laughs> so, I didn't wasn't prepared for the beginning scene of Ragnarok. Like, that hurt with, the, with Fenrir. Yeah. That hurt. I was like... Yeah. It has. That's when I knew the game was going to be good. When I'm sitting there and I look over, Jesse's crying. I'm sitting there and there's like tears bubbling. I'm like, this hurts. Yeah. Like, it should not look this good. And I'm playing on a PS4, mind you. Yeah, it was beautiful on PS5. It I, looks phenomenal on PS4. Like, I can put on HDR and it looks... It honestly, I didn't even... I was like, I'm blown away that it actually freaking runs. I figured... I was expecting play us, PS1 level graphics yeah. when I tried to play it. it, it these games have sent come such a long way from like PS2 all the way to PS4 slash PS5 like it man I was I'm, it's amazing it's, like I was sometimes I was just sitting there like oh my god I can't believe this is happening it some of the reviews were saying like people were like you know tearing up and crying like I, I got very close a few times where I got choked up where I'm like ha ah, no the wolf just very very sad passing away and then like <laughs> literally you could like do all the stuff with the um with Atreus, where he's like, I'm not burying any more wolves. It's like, game. Or yeah. like when you get to run around the, the Lakes of Nine, which they froze for Fimble Venter, which is really neat. But then you could find the other, like, poachers that murder or capture all the other horse dogs, and you can go through and you can clear them out for Atreus when he's not with you. Really? Yeah, it's one of the things they say, like, because then they talk about how you got your wolves, and uh, it's with Freya. And he goes, I got them through these people, which was, oh, he's like, she goes, well, we can hunt them down if you want, and then you can hunt each each pack down and really? kill all the raiders and move on. Hmm. And that's when you just, like, you get on the dogs and you run around the Lakes of the Nine. Which is also super cool that they remodeled the entire yeah, world. It, it was cool to see how Fimble Winter kind of, like, affected oh. each of the <laughs> different realms. I don't know if they talk about this, but I'm curious. So, there's, they talk about it in Prophecy that Thor hits Gorgamunder, or the world-eating er, snake, so hard it slaps him back into the past. Mm-hmm. 
do you think, this is definitely a spoiler, do you think that that is what happens after you put the spirit of the titan in the snake with Anger Boda? Do you think that becomes Gorgamonder? Because the next dialogue she says is, it's growing faster and bigger than normal. And Gorgamonder is supposed to be, per mythology, Loki's son. And then the act of giving a soul to the snake could be the act of passing down a soul to another instant because the thing was soulless. So I... That's what I, I was thinking. Like, Wouldn't that be... If that's how they tie that in, that would be super cool. There could be something there. But... Uh, Probably not. Because that's what I was thinking. They, like, they mention that. Exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mimir talks about it at one point in the game. So I don't want to say anything. Shoot. All right. But it, it's coming up. That That's what I'm saying. Like, this whole game has kind of, like, we're fully going into spoilers. So, like, from here on out. Um, For the record. We, we mentioned a little bit before, but nothing too right. bad, right? If this ever finds any game developers, this is the type of, I know this is not possible for most people. This is the type of quality I want. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to look this good, but, like, this well thought yeah. out of a story is oh just, my like, is it? I don't know. This is probably my favorite video game of all time at the moment because this is just so good. The story is great. I love. I've never played a game where I want to play the side missions as much. Like I'm honestly kind of glad I didn't beat it because now I have a reason to keep playing it for a little bit longer. Like I would say, this is definitely the best game of all time. I'd have to really think about. Oh, my favorite. I don't know about best. No, yeah. it, but like. Elden Ring could, definitely is going to have a, uh, I could, a battle. I could sure. probably say this is some of the. Maybe the best storytelling I've mm -hmm. ever seen in a game. Like, yeah. Where I act, it made me feel feelings. I got invested in the characters and, like, I, I really wanted to know more. Like, Dark Souls is good, but a lot of that's... Up, you, no you have, you have to yeah. search it out. You have to build it yourself. You have to read and, and things are presented mm -hmm. to you, but it's... It, this prevents... Uh, presents a story to you, and you kind of like live through it. Yeah, and then you get to see it's almost like going through. I guess we can go back to Hercules. There's like seven trials, like yeah. him going through all of his trials, which is super cool. And I just got to say, the storytelling is just top notch. Like, what it's so part of the game good. are you at right now? What was the last thing that you? We have to go to Helheim to f capture Garm. Okay, so because Atreus, yeah, Atreus freed it with uh, Thrud or Thrudy, Thrudy. Would you? What is Garm's deal? Like he's a realm. So when I Loki went and released him, I was like, okay, it seems fine. To well, me. at first I thought it was like I can't ever remember the dogs' names that eat, because the ones that travel Ragnarok is when the dog like Skelty, Skull and Hattie. Yeah, Hattie. once those two capture the sun and moon, mm -hmm. like collectively, that's when Ragnarok starts. So that's why Odin wanted to chain them up somewhere. Mm -hmm. But then you see them they're running around in Vanaheim doing all that cool stuff because you get to see them run through yeah. which I was like that's so damn cool when, when I saw that Brooke was like walking by she was like wow <laughs> like I know, I know there was times where I stopped like because there's always the find the Odin's ravens yeah uh, and I would just stop and like I would miss them just because I'm like dang this is so freaking pretty <laughs> yeah. like how they're even saying that the PS4 ver or PS5 version looks better than its PC counterpart at the moment wow yeah, I w so I played on uh, performance. Mm -hmm. So there was. The, oh, you can set different modes. Yeah, can I get uh, another a refill here? Yeah, there's performance, and then there's like the uh, high quality whatever. H two O. Yeah. So I did performance just because I wanted the sixty frames per second, and you it already it. looked beautiful. I. Uh, if I it, just wanted it to run smooth and. If it looks better than the one that I already have on, like on the PlayStation Four, then I'm blown away. There's a PlayStation Four. I'm looking at. I'm like, I don't understand why people complain. Like this yeah. shit looks amazing. It was so awesome, but it was awesome. Like Brooke kept coming, by, like she would hear me playing, you know, and then uh, Loki would shoot the arrow and say Skiafa. So then Skiafa. that was her thing. Yeah, I'd, she'd hear me fighting and she goes Skiafa. <laughs> well, even the bows were super cool. How they would do like the sound arrows and like yeah. they explode and then get stunned for a second. What did you think of the uh, the menus and stuff? There was a lot of different options for spells and light runic attacks, heavy runic attacks the for light, every weapon. Yeah, there's always those in there, and they are like. So, from my understanding of the first game, is strength is okay, but you really need runic abilities to do like shit tons of damage. Yeah. So, and it's kind of the same thing with this one. So, for like. 
What I find that you have to do is you have to figure out a way to boost the ever-loving piss out of your runic abilities mm -hmm. while doing it. So there's... What I really like now is that they're playing a harder effect into... Rather than giving you the talisman in the first game where if you dodge the last second, you slow down time. You can get right. those in a pair of pants from Alfheim. Right. So you can put those on, but you take them off, you can't do it anymore. But with the shields, they give you different shields, and there's one called the Dauntless Shield, where if you parry perfectly, it gives you a cooldown buff, which really? increases your cooldown, so you can keep spamming them, and then you can get something to build on top of it that has a high chance of dropping um, like rage runes or health runes that you can stomp on. Yeah. And I've been doing that, and it's stupid like it's it's such a good combo you immediately go in there you do the one where it freezes the ground everyone slows down yeah then you wait for the guy to do a slow attack pop parry it real quickly so then it gives you the cooldown buff you start popping on him do the next one then you're back up to the that, that's probably what i should have done because i just stacked strength just playing like a big dumb brute yeah just beating the uh, piss out of him you start to feel it towards the end you're like these runic abilities are so powerful and then when you have the blades of chaos the, the leviathan axe and then the drop near spear it was like you could really like oh, i would set myself up like just going at it. There's one rune that I would really like to get. It's my favorite one from the first game. It's a Chaos Blade one where you literally throw both spears into an enemy. Yeah. Then you pull it and you drag them into your yeah. knee. So yeah. like you f do like a flying knee into their head and That's it does a, good like one. a ton of damage. There's that one and then always the one where you hit the ground and you freeze the area around you. Yeah. I That was a good one but my favorite one was the Drop Near Spear. The, it had like a charge on it. So you could Charge oh, yeah. all the way across the map, stab into someone, and steal their energy in the sword or That's in the spear. Because I've been working on that, then I also found like the Atreus one you can press triangle and you can whip to them, which is always yeah. really freaking cool. Or with the Blades of Chaos, you can pull them towards you. I was really hoping we would get more um, of Atreus. That was like my biggest thing. Like I did feel they did a lot with him. Like, he, he was so much better, and I really, really liked him. And it was cool to watch him be in idiot like it was like everyone's like you're just kratos the entire time like you don't get it right like the, sh the shit comment always cracks me up where he's like shit 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 <laughs> and he's like you really wanted that to be your last words? right 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 and he's right, like right. you got a good point he's like i don't care what you said it's like but that was a shine that you lost control yeah and i was like he's all about control because i feel like he has to know that this spartan rage has to be in the sun yeah, I don't know if you got the part where... He, did you see it? I don't know if it's part of the side missions or the back where Kratos actually talks about his childhood. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, that, that part that was, was super cool. Yeah. When he talks about being a Spartan. He's like, we just got sent out there. They just essentially said, figure it out. And yeah. then we had to get way back. And he's like, and I would not have that for my son. And I love when they show you, like, you finally got to meet Faye. Lao Fei. Like, Lao Fei the Just. And you got to see... What she was and how she changed it, and what cracks me up is she calls him Grumbles. That's literally what I call my dog. Every time, <laughs> every time she showed up, I was like, "Oh, I love this!" Like, and it's, he is so grumpy, and she is just so loving, and like, and it's like the perfect combo because she's just sitting there, just like chipping away at yeah. his armor the whole yeah. time. And then she said Grumbles, and I literally that's what I call my dog, who growls at me constantly, so I call it Grumbles, and I was like, "Look at that!" Yep. Yeah. You literally, my dog apparently is Kratos. I have picked a good name, but it's just that and like seeing him, her like being able to speak with him beyond the grave and like like this is what we need. But I don't. I am worried that Lao Fei kind of set him up for it because even Frey brought it up. Like if Lao Fei knew who you were, and you were put in the path of three gods and you already murked them, don't you think that she may have had a plan for you? And he was like. I don't want to believe that. <laughs> and yeah. then Mimir's like, why are you doing this? Stop being a dick. He's yeah. trying to help. And she's like, y you're right. I'm sorry. And he's like, good. We're done. <laughs> there were there were some things I was very worried about as the story went on. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil it for you because I want you to experience it with Jesse. Do it on your own. Like, uh, you're going to love this. But it was, um, they handled it beautifully. Like, there's a, some stuff that happens, even what with what you're talking about, where you're like, she planned this. They make it work in a beautiful way. They're like, ah, that's awesome. It's just such a cool combo. And, like, I am seeing now, like, as it gets through there, we just we kind of saw the part where Kratos, like, throws his stuff down for the first time. And you're like, wow, he's getting, he's, yeah. getting, he's tired. He's yeah. like, you can see him looking at it, or even in the where movie. he was taking his armor off and kind of just looking at. Yeah. You can see like the burns in his skin, 
Or even like the very opening scene of the game where you see him holding Lao Fei's bag. Yeah. And you see his face like contort. I'm like, I never would have expected to see that face on Kratos. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's yeah. like contorts and you like you see him school it and he like just puts it back and goes back to talking to his son. And you're like, how in the world? Yeah, I, 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 everybody needs to play this game. Like, if you're, if you have any history with God of War, you know. You know, if you're just like North mythology, it's honestly fun enough because the, the two games go over so much. Yeah, and even if you think you know. Can, can we? I'm trying. There's like, something I wanted to ask. I was very turned off by Odin at first when they made him sound like an old mobster. <laughs> I but love the, Odin. But then, like, the more I saw him, I was like, I actually yeah. absolutely love this person. And he's yeah. like, yeah, understand. Yeah. yeah, understand. Don't take too long, you big oaf. And he, like, Odin leaves the room. Odin was awesome. Like, at first, I was like, I don't know how I feel. And he's literally a mob boss. I was like, he is perfect for how yeah. they decasted him. He And is it a big like, actor? Like, he looks like someone I know. I was... I uh, He was one of the reasons I was blown away. He was so good. Every time mm-hmm. he was on screen, I, I would almost forget it's a video game. Yeah. Like, ah, keep going. Keep talking. I want to hear more. Like, like when he was... When he first walks in, he's like, yeah, you need to stop looking for tear, you understand? And he's like... Kept saying, you understand? I was like, all right, so he's a mob boss. And he's like... He looks at... Thor and he goes, don't take all day. And he like walks out of the thing and then like Thor literally just... Which um, Aesir gods have you met yet? Thor, Thrudy, Selfie, or Sefi, Heimdall, which I also didn't know... You met Heimdall? I knew Gallarhorn. Because yeah, that was after Garm, so he climbs up the mountain and... Yeah, and then he's like holding you. Yeah. Well, that's before he holds you up there. But like the Gallarhorn being a very prominent rocket launcher from Destiny. I didn't realize had mm-hmm. North Roots, mm-hmm. and it literally was a horn that starts. I was like, yeah, oh, that's kind of neat. But also, yeah, they made horn's cool. Heimdall very different from his um, Marvel counterpart, being that Heimdall is an absolute asshole. Yeah. He's like a prick and a half. Like, I was below, I'm like, this guy's an asshole. Yeah. But I suppose if you think you know everything, you could see you'd every be, future, yeah. you'd be like, yeah. You know, I'm and then their way to fight him, it was the same thing. Like, they're like, how do we fight a guy who can see the future? My first was like, overwhelm the senses, I guess. Yep. Just give him too many possibilities. And then, like, they're like, well, fun story. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. I, I didn't know anything about the drop near ring before that. It was I'm, something similar in uh, Lord of the Rings, right? Or in The Hobbit like, or something? Maybe, like, the Ring of Power, but I don't know. Because it's, yeah, it, like, multiplies its abilities, essentially. Yeah, that was a that was a cool idea. I'm like, what are they going to do? Because at first, she, they bring it, and they craft it into, you know, they bring the ring, and they bring the sword. I'm like, what are they going to make? And then she makes, you know, like, blesses the sword, and then changes it back to a ring. I'm like, oh, it's just a ring? But then he transforms the it. The fact that like, it, like, oh, drops cool. into a ring, and they can shoot back out. I'm like, well, that is just yeah. one of the coolest weapons yep. I've ever heard of. Yep. Just like... Poof, it's like um, Percy Jackson had a ring sword. Okay. No, he had a pen sword. You double tap the thing and it turned into a sword. Oh. And I was like, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it was. Um, I thought they screwed it up at first. I didn't know what was going to happen when he like dropped it and it like went oh, into like, a whole bunch like, of yeah. rings and he just grabbed it. I didn't think they'd pay off on it like immediately after where he's like drops it for and a it second there. Splits I again. never ever would have considered being interested in learning the background of Sindri and Brock because I was yeah. like whatever Brock is my favorite because he tells me he calls me a fucker every yeah. time I walk over there and that's hilarious to me yeah. especially now when you're walking he's like hey you fuckers what do you need and you're like yeah. you know what Brock you're on to something there I absolutely love you or he calls people what he calls like piss spots or whatever <laughs> when he goes to fight them or whatever and it just learning their background didn't realize I needed it but I was actually very happy with how it happened like learning more about them and even Brock being more of a supporter of what's it of uh, Kratos was kind of crazy itself. Yeah, yeah, it's um, what an amazing game. Yeah, especially the fact that um, actually, you know, my favorite side character so far probably would be Angry Boda, only because like yeah. her magic would leave the, the paint everywhere yeah. and it would it would stay on the ground. I was like, that is such a cool. That, I kept such a the a, first a time it shit. happened. I'm like, what is this? Uh, the Snowmo guys or something? Because yeah. it was like all <laughs> bright neon colors. I'm like, ah, oh, well, that's cool. The more okay. you bash square, and it literally stays. I'm like that is such a neat yeah. little habit. And then Brock <laughs> literally has got a bag of shit. He just throws bombs at people. <laughs> there was one part I I wanted to know if you ran into it, where Heimdall is talking to Odin, and they send you back to your room, mm-hmm. and they're I think like I talking. Did. Yeah. Did you stay at the door? No, what did he say? So you could stay at, like, you could turn around after you leave, and they're talking, and you put your ear up to the door and listen, and then Odin's like, 
Loki, I know you're there. <laughs> Please leave. So then you walk away, and it's still there. You can go back and put your ear up again. He's like, oh, uh, Loki, I'm serious. I, I know you're there. Please leave. And then Heimdall starts shit-talking you. He's like, did you know he was this weird when you invited him here? Because <laughs> at this point, this is awkward. <laughs> No, I absolutely really like, at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about Odin, but he has taken me over, he's such a yeah. cool bad guy, and like, Thor being an absolute unit and a half yeah, is pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, every step along the way, like, uh, Tyr did not expect that, Thor, I did not expect that, like, he was just, like, actually a drunk. Well, <laughs> yeah, he's flaw. Just, yeah, well, that's what they kind of made him. And he, cause They're very such, human characters. It's not like the Greek gods where they were just, like, assholes that were completely unrelatable, you know? Yeah, and, like, this one is, it's really neat with Thor because I was kind of curious to see how it was going to be because you could see him, like, talking, like, you're destroying like me. He, like, he wants to fight. Right. So I was kind of hoping that, like, <clears throat> I saw a scene where he's punching the wall and at first, like, maybe he's trying to become... The old Ghost of Sparta, because I feel yeah. like he's definitely gotten weaker. He feels weaker a you little bit in You haven't seen that game. part yet? Well, he's punching the wall, and then he switched to a tray. He's punching okay, the wall. Okay. He's like, so I'm you, gaining focus. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I thought he was just going to like punch the wall and be like, I'm ready to fucking murder yeah, at first, Yeah, at first when he woke up there, I'm like, somehow did he get teleported to Asgard? Is mm -hmm. he trying to punch through the wall? Like, where is he? But then That's it, why I thought, like, I was like, maybe he's gaining like that, because he's just threatening, like, I'll show you who I've been. Yeah. And punches through the wall. And that, other spoiler, the fact that he's like, I'm going to kill Heimdall just because the shithead's going to try to hurt my son. Yeah. It's, he's like, I don't care if there's war, I don't care if genocide, I'm going to murder him because he's a threat to my child. Yeah, that was, as the game progresses, that's the part that like kept getting me. It's like... Oh, I'm sure you relate heavily. It's like, I would do the same thing, I imagine. It's probably like what every father would do. It was like that, but then it's also the, the idea that like one day you're going to die and you're going to leave your child behind. It was like... Ah. And it kept, like, stabbing me. It's like, oh, that's so touching, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, uh, so sad. Because well, then you know that, like, it's very set in its ways. They're, this is the prophecy. It's going to happen. And they try to avoid it, and they keep heading down the path. And he knows what's at the end of the path. And it's like, if I was in that situation, like, And God. you can see him, like, fighting it. He's like, I right. just want to spend more time with my right. son and do stuff. And like, that's... And then he pushes him away. His son goes to Asgard. It all goes to hell. Then he loses time with him and when he knows, like... Yeah, and you can tell it, it's like, that's all It's all he wants is just to sit with the son. Like, the part where they, like, reunite and he yeah. hugs him and you can see Kratos, like... Uh... I, I'm definitely... 2018, I played it, beat it. And dropped it. This one, I'm definitely going to play it again. Oh, like, 100%. I, I, I want more. I'm thinking about even trying to platinum it. Like, I want to go... I, I want to see everything in this game. I want to do it all. Like, the story was so good. All I, the little side missions so far have been so entertaining. And you learn so much about Kratos. Especially when Atreus is not there. And, like... I love when he is with Freya. And he can open up about being a god to the god and he like is just able to communicate about his past like that is what i wanted them to do i wanted yeah. them to relate the more of the current game to why the hell kratos suits they don't really right. explain it right and they kind of do a little bit where they talk about fate like where we met and i was like well how did he get there did he fall there because at the end of god of war three he kills everybody and like the world goes into turmoil yeah so like i wanted to know like how the hell does it did he get just teleported like what the hell happened or is it an ultimate the, the reality? Way I, the way I always kind of understood that is he was, like, kind of immortal to his sense. Well, it doesn't you know, seem like, like... Unless somebody killed him, so he could have been alive for a long time and seen you would humanity come back and... I mean, it's been a, it was, it's a couple, what, I don't know when the duration of the times between the two of them, but it's got to be a long-ass time. Yeah, but it's not like there's even, like, a big, bustling civilization either. It's Which, like, seeing people with super yeah, dwarves yeah, and stuff, yeah. I was like, that's really cool. They put us in, a, like, an actual dwarven world. What do you think of that other dwarf guy with the squid? Oh, Andre? Yeah. Oh, or Durin. Durin. Yeah, Durin. I'm like, what a weird I kind of get him, though, where he's like, get up here and he's like, whoosh, yeah. and, like, spits on his paper and he seals it. I was like, that's kind of neat. That's yeah. actually a pretty solid idea. Now, this yeah. game is definitely going to be something I'll play again. Yeah. I'll probably do something I'll play it again every couple of years because, like, I'm, I've yet to find a story where that holds me that totally, where I'm like, I actually don't want to stop because it's that interesting to me. What did you think of the 
But one more thing before we go. What did you think of the Norns? Well, besides sitting there and getting so goddamn frustrated because they'd always pop in and whisper yeah. what you're saying and vanish. And I was like, that has to be frustrating. Uh, you I know, yeah. Like Freya's like, shut up! And she screams <laughs> back at her. I was like, ha! That was so eerie, and I never wanted it to end because I just wanted to know what was going to happen. Well, and that, they were just saying, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. And then they try to avoid it as the story goes on, and it's like... Okay, you're going to try it, but it's not going to work. And yeah. then, like... I liked on the way up where Trey, where uh, Mimir's like, so why don't you tell me about the the, the oracles from your time period? And he would like kind of tell him about his side view where he's like, oh, well, we did this. I was like, that. Then you get to compare to his story to that one. Like, well, okay, yeah, it's definitely a lot that's violent because yeah. I'm pretty sure you murdered all of yours. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just such a, it's, it's such a cool. I want to learn more about that too because. I don't know what you go into, but like all those reeds that were hanging down. Like, it's got to be like because like it looked like hair, but because uh, that's how they always like describe it. Like the strings of fate, though, is yeah. always what they kind of describe it, and that's kind of what I figured it was. Okay. And it almost seemed like that's what they were made out of. Like they're made out of the fate, like itself. I I want to look to and see, you know, is this? I'm assuming it's more accurate to what Norse mythology actually is. It's not probably, like the Marvel, like, superhero glossed over... Well, I'm sure there's probably... Because, you know, they go into the stories, like, in the first one, they had no business talking about anything in Asgard. Yeah. Because there's no... You don't get to see it. Like, right. the, the, the wall building was no point that they bring back in the second one. Or really anything that they kind of dove into. Because like, they do a lot of backstory just being in the boat, which... In my personal opinion, the boat lore dump that they do when you're just traveling from island yeah. to island is such a fucking cool way to do it. Yeah. It's just so, it's it's an easy way to do it. I got nothing else to do but listen to it anyways. I get to see that, and then you kind of do it. Like, in the first game, if you do enough of the side missions, Kratos actually tells you a story. Really? Yeah. And I know in the game he tells you about how he names his son, but then he also talks about a little bit of other stuff when you go through, and it's just really cool to kind of like see him break down and go into it. And then you even get him to do a little bit of a story in the middle of the game without any preamble. And the mirror's like, well, why don't you finish off where we left off, big man? And then he tells, I don't remember what character we were talking at the time, but then he tells a character of kind of what happened. And I was like, that is such good writing and dialogue, and the characters did so good when they did it. Like, the actors are great, and it's even better that the, my dad's favorite show, the guy's name is Teal'c, he's Stargate SG-1, he's this absolute unit of a dude. Yeah. He plays Kratos. So I'm like, hey, Dad, your favorite actor's in here. He's oh, a gigantic God. man. Yeah. We're, we're definitely going to come back. We're going to do this again after Garrett beats the game. I want to see what your thoughts are on the rest of it, be... because it uh, it's so good. It's per. It's not perfect, but it's definitely. It's very good. It's it's fantastic. I definitely couldn't think of any way to make it better so far. Like I haven't run into anything where this is dumb. Sometimes there's some glitches, but I just think that's because it's PS4. <laughs> I noticed like it was a few like graphical things. Like there was one scene where uh, Kratos was in the boat with uh, his wife, Faye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you, you see the boat like go up a little bit, but she goes down. It was weird stuff like that where it's like. It's Mine kind is of weird, you one know? shut down, like it did, turned off on its own. But to be fair, Jesse was playing it for, I'm pretty sure, like almost 14 hours at that time. Yeah. So I was like, you got to turn that thing off, please. <laughs> uh, and then the other one is, I'll be fighting bad guys, and the only thing, there'll be the glowing eyes, and then they'll slowly materialize in. I'm like, well, that almost makes it a little more spooky. Yeah, so, yeah. And then by the time they get in there, I'm already like in their face with the axe, about to clip them. <laughs> I don't think I really had any kind of glitches. The only issue I had last night, like I guess the... When Ashley and Brooke came home, they opened the front door so that closed the closet door a little bit, but didn't fully close, so I thought it was fine. And then I got a warning, like, your PS5 is too hot. Please <laughs> shut down the system. Yeah, no, like, I well, think... Well, I'm not going to do that, but I'll open the door and open the window. Yeah, I think mine was definitely was having it on for too long, and I think it's just because it's got a higher, probably, like, system requirements than mine yeah. has, that it, it's just not loading. But I haven't... It hasn't been a single problem. Like, this is breaking. This is just yeah, super I, I've cool. I've had no game-breaking nope. glitches, so. You no, know, it's perfect. I love it. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Thank you, guys. Bye.